So it seems like if you're designing anything that will go on a screen, today there's only one choice. Figma. 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 This is Figma. It's what every design job will ask you to have experience in, next of course to being a team player. And to be honest, I've never seen a piece of software completely take over an industry so quickly. So how was this possible? How is it possible that anytime I open Photoshop or Illustrator, it's melting my computer and I have to deal with massive files while Figma casually loads a giant project with 10 people collaborating in real time on my crusty browser. I looked under the curtain and now it all makes sense. See, there are three key psychological principles behind Figma's design. And the first one is the solution to one of the hardest problems to solve in tech. This video is sponsored by Mobin. More about them later. This is Adobe After Effects. It's what I use to make the animations you see in my videos. Say I'm a new user and I want to make just a simple animation. How hard can it be? Whoa, what? What, what is this? 3D frame blending pixel motion? Advanced spill suppressor? Wiggler? What the hell is a wiggler? Dragon Boris effects smoker? What the hell is all this stuff? I just want to create some text and move it around. Well, this is the biggest problem that all professional tools face and what Figma found a genius solution for. See, each tool starts simple and intuitive. Look at us, we're gonna be easy to use. But as more people come and they become more advanced, they start to ask for advanced features. This is a professional tool in the end. Behind this tracking Boris FX Mocha button in After Effects, there was surely some guy complaining to Adobe that he really, really needed this feature. For example, in Photoshop, there's an edit menu. Pretty standard. Copy, paste, and oh. C content aware scale puppet warp why is it here together with adobe pdf presets and open color io settings everything becomes mixed together basic feature advanced features and this is what usually happens when you keep adding more and more until you spiral out of control and you end up with a scary interface filled to the brim with buttons and features and you don't even know where to start this problem is called cognitive overload when we are given too much information our brain simply cannot process it all at once but instead look at figma it looks approachable it makes you feel like you don't need a four hour tutorial to learn it. I can just create a rectangle without having to know what the hell tracking Boris FX Mocha is. But it's still a professional tool. All the apps you use every day are designed in Figma. You can build insanely complex interactive prototypes, create massive design systems with conditional logic, but you can also just make a presentation. I went from using it to make basic presentations to redesigning how social media works with this very complex interactive prototype from my last video and it didn't feel overwhelming. So how did they manage to solve of the problem of cognitive overload. What traditional tools did to solve this was saying, hey, why don't we allow people to customize the software? That will help. You can take these panels and rearrange them wherever you need. So you can only have what you truly need on the screen. And that didn't work. Because in reality, all you're doing is just moving complexity around. And not only that, you now have to manage window presets, save them, and realizing that what you're looking for is in a panel you've hidden, well, it's incredibly frustrating. So Figma's genius solution to this, and the first psychology principle that they use to solve the biggest problem in professional software is called progressive disclosure. To show you, let's just create a rectangle. Here it is in the basic components, which are, well, basic. Create a rectangle, a circle, text, makes sense. If we take a tool like Illustrator, for example, basic commands like create text are mixed in with advanced ones like this objects on path. Why? But now let's say I want to create an iOS icon. Let's start by rounding the corners. Nice. But iOS icons are not rounded squares. They are what's called a squircle. Hmm, this is something quite advanced. And that advanced option is disclosed only when you go into detail into the rounded corners panel. There it is. We also get a nice handy marker to the level of smoothing that the iOS uses. And once I deselect, I'm back to a simple, clean interface. This is progressive disclosure, and it's the secret that made Figma so successful. If you're making a presentation, you don't need to see conditional variables and advanced components so they're hidden, and only the right context, the option is disclosed. You don't need advanced controls for paths if you're moving some text around, but when you do need them, here they are. And this kind of progressive disclosure is extremely hard to design correctly. But the true genius of Figma is that they were lazy. See, when people started coming and asking for the really advanced stuff, instead of cluttering the app with a thousand features, they were like, nah, we're not going to build any of this. Why don't you build it for us? 
and this is their genius solution, Instant Plugins. If you wanna remove a background from an image or you wanna create these cool gradients, there's no options to do that in Figma, but you can just search for a plugin that does that, it loads instantly and voila, it's done. Now, plugins have existed since forever, but the difference here is that they made them instantaneous. There's no need for installing anything or reloading the app. You just type in what you want and you run it. Now you get to choose between different plugins as well. And best of all, they didn't have to do any of the work. Some of the most genius solutions come out of being lazy and this might be one of my favorite ones. But what if you are lazy too? What if instead of aimlessly wandering around the internet for inspiration and references when you're designing and signing up for a hundred services, some other lazy person created one, curated extensive and high quality library of all the screens from all the apps out there. Well, these lazy people are Mobbin and they're the sponsor of this video. Mobbin is the one place where you can find screenshots and entire flows from all the major apps and websites. When I was making my last video and I redesigned how social media works, I used Mobbin to grab inspirations and screenshots from from all the major social apps. And not only that, there are also working Figma prototypes that you can just import and use of entire flows. And search is not just by apps, but well, by everything. You can just type in fun and hear some fun UI inspiration. You wanna find some gamification examples? There you go. Need inspirations to make a carousel? Type that in and you get endless options. If you're a designer, Mobbin is a must. Remember to use the link in the description so they know I sent you. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. But let's go back to Figma, because even though their app design is genius, there are still some pieces that they haven't really cracked. The tree where you have all your elements on the left becomes an unnavigable mess in no time. And the founder, Dylan, also admits that the way Figma handles pages is not the best. Implementation of pages that we are at today. Uh, I, I just don't think it's like the most elegant solution in the context of like the entire system of product design that you could create. So many times I was wondering why my project was completely empty and everything was just on another page. But the second psychological principles that they used is probably the most interesting one because Figma basically invented it. And that's team flow state. You know when you're doing something and you're completely immersed in it. You could be coding, painting, designing, writing. You're completely absorbed in what you're doing. Hours fly by like minutes and you're just insanely productive. Well, congratulations, you just reached the flow state. The idea of flow state was introduced in 1975 by this guy that I don't even want to attempt to pronounce. And we all experienced it at least once. But the flow state is something that you achieve for the most part on your own as an individual. And when you're done with your flow state session, you save your file, probably with some weird name like final v3 ultimate super final number two and share it with other people that then have to download the file, maybe give you some comments in some other app. Then someone else works on it, creating a separate version that you have to merge. What started as complete focus onto something quickly becomes a mess if you're working with other people. But what Figma pioneered and the reason behind its success, especially with teams working on a project, is that for the first time, it allowed groups of people to reach a sort of collective flow state when working working on the same project. When I was working in my last company as a product manager, I spent hours in Figma with the designer on my team, trying different versions, making mockups on the fly for different solutions, and then an engineer would join and we discussed tweaks based on technical complexities he's handling. Everything was happening so fast. We can all see our cursors in real time, move around to do things. Everyone can leave comments and we are all working on the most up-to-date version and just jam together. Because finally we were able to be in a group flow state, not just on our own, but as a team. And this way of collaboration collaborating with real-time moving cursors with everyone's names, getting rid of a thousand file versions, well, now it's everywhere. You might recognize it in Google Docs, for example, but Figma pioneered this. But the third secret to Figma's success is this, a ball in a pool of water. These are all websites from 2012. Facebook was getting popular and had some of these online games, but the reality is that you couldn't really do much inside of a browser. But Dylan Field, the founder of Figma, knew that the future of design tools is not a giant application that you run on your computer, but something that runs in the browser. But at the time, everyone just left him off. Really? You wanna replicate a gigantic app like Photoshop that already fries powerful computers and run it in a browser window? Until a technical assistant at his university, Evan Wallace, shows him this. It's a demo that he made of this ball in a pool of water with physics simulation, caustic simulation. It's a bit choppy, but it's running in the browser thanks to this new technology called WebGL. And this is the missing piece he needed. And when they were raising money to build it, they had to make these little demos of Photoshop-like features that ran on a browser. I show them to investors because no one would believe that what they wanted to do was even possible. Around color lines, so basically the idea was to take a photo and then from there you could uh, extract sort of out 
here are the different colors in that photo. And in 2013, once they secured $3.8 million to build Figma from Index Ventures, they then proceeded to do the exact opposite of what any startup should do. This is how long it took for many of the most popular products you use to be released. GitHub, six months. Canva, one year. And then all the way down here, there's Figma. They took three entire years. The Silicon Valley playbook is to launch your product as fast as possible, share it with users and keep iterating. Instead, they decided, you know what, this. We're gonna close ourselves in our office and we're gonna work on Figma in private, in secret for three years without releasing anything. But this crazy decision turned out to be the third secret to their success, their crazy technical foundations. This is why they've been unrivaled for so long, because building an app that needs to be hyper-performant in real time with on gigantic projects full of media to load and render with multiple people editing at the same time, instant plugins all inside the browser running on a crappy laptop for millions of people, well, that's extremely hard to do. Because creating anything that comes even close is an insane technical challenge. Even a giant like Adobe wasn't up to the challenge. So they did the only thing they could do, throw a gigantic pile of money to Figma to acquire it in 2023. $20 billion, which was about 50 times the revenue that Figma was making in a year at the time. Until the government said, I don't think so, brother. The antitrust stopped the acquisition because Figma was the only viable competitor. Otherwise, I'm sure by now, Adobe would have added the entire observable universe to their creative cloud. But how did I end up using Figma so much? Well, lately I spent countless hours redesigning one of the most problematic pieces of the internet today, social media. And not only that, doing it so that Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube would actually adopt my design. And you can see all of that in this video right here. I'm Enrico, and I'll see you in the next one.